It's been another week of uh, awesome episodes. Okay, I gave three of the seven animes I'm watching the two thumbs up. So this week has been a, this week this week has been chock full of great episodes, and uh, well, you, you just have to you just have to watch my digest. All right. You just have to watch this digest, this particular digest. So, mga lifestyle, welcome to another episode reviews digest. Toaro Aga on the Railgun Season Three, Episode Seventeen. Now, uh, the boy named Miyami, uh, he he, as we all know, he's a precognition expert. The ability to predict the future through psychic photography. Now, we've seen in this episode that it's a physically taxing ability. He got hospitalized during the middle of the episode. If you, if you guys have, if you guys have seen it already. Of course, uh, he's helped judgment out to the best of his abilities, thwarting crimes, thwarting incidents. Then one day, he predicts, probably makes the biggest prediction of his life. A park fire. Things get really complicated. Dahil meron siyang alagang aso dun. Meron siyang inaalagang uh, asong gala dun eh. A stray dog. He named Pero. He named it Pero. But in the, uh, in the episode, uh, in the episode itself, I don't think that's a stray dog. I, it looks like a Shiba. <laughs> Okay. It's a Japanese. It's a Japanese. Uh, it's a homegrown Japanese breed of dog. All right. I don't know. I don't know if there are three Shibas in Japan. Uh, what do I know? I'm not in Japan right now. But anyway, so that's where that's where he got hospitalized when he predicted this uh, park fire because it involves him. Well, his best friend. A dog. So, pinano na ng judgment kung paano i-rescue yung mga yung, kung magkakataong eh, magkakataong nga doon as he predicted. So, they were able they were able to rescue all those people then uh, wala yata lumit, lumitaw na lang late sa prediction niya na magdadama yung aso niya. So, he rushed to the scene and told Shirai to res and asked Shirai to rescue his dog rescue his friend so Shirai was able to natuntunan nila nila Shirai tsaka ni Wiharu yung aso so Shirai was able to rescue was able to rescue him eventually they found out that a group of kids developed a drug to induce the blossoming of the cherry blossom trees in the park yun ang mga nakasaksak na ampules dun sa base na mga puno which caused the fire it instantly turned those cherry blossom trees into as they described in the episode powder kegs okay? lalo naging flammable ang mga puno yun so isang isang phosphor lang yeah that, 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 was, that started the fire basically the the drug is that flammable. The drug was that flammable. So, did they had background in chemistry? No. They just learned it through an app called Indian Poker. Okay? So, moral lesson of the episode, do not fuck with nature. It's quite an empowering episode actually because um, with all the chemicals we, we put into plants just to have better food. Yep. This one is a, this one is a this one this episode is a lesson. Excuse me. So, final part of the episode uh, has um, Miami and Shirai talking to each other. Remind Shirai, rem, Shirai reminding Miami to master his master his powers well. Because it's obvious that uh, hindi pa niya talaga ng ganong control ng powers niya because uh, he, he got hospitalized for using it too much. So yun ang pinalalas kanya ni Shirai. If he wants to join Judgment, he has to, 
He has to take full control of his powers first. Because espers, uh, while using their abilities, it's all some esper abilities are physically taxing, talaga. Like yung kay Miami, okay? precognition yan. So uh, it can it can rack his brain a lot. So if you get your brain racked, your body does your body goes with it as well. Basic, uh, basic, uh, basic medical science. So, to Aro Agako no Railgun Season 3, Episode 17. Thumbs up. But haven't you noticed? No Mikoto. <laughs> no, Mikoto is not in this episode. So, I hope we, uh, well, we we saw the teaser already for for Episode 18. So, Mikoto is going to make an appearance again. After, after sitting out after sitting out the entire episode 17, she's, she will make an appearance in episode 18. But further down the line, I believe that uh, they are going to need Mik- Mikoto's help again because literally, it's an unforeseen enemy. Okay? Ang lang yung ape. So, the enemy right now is, is, that, is the app called Indian Poker. It's been feeding the wrong information to the public, so judgment. I believe it's going to be it's going to be keeping tabs on this app, the app that Miami created, actually. So if you haven't uh, if you haven't read seen episode 16, binanggit ni Miami don na siya ang creator ng app na yon. And uh, right now he has no control over it, so that's yet to be discovered by judgment and Mikoto. So. Let's wait for the next episode. TB8 episode 3. Well, uh, it's a bit uh it's a bit slow. It's a, it's a slow episode. Well, uh, they're they've already they're uh they're already leaving the old camp and they're taking refuge in a new one. Actually, it's a building. <clears throat> um, for the first time, they encountered a um, what you call a day walking jibia. Iba ayon natin lahat ng mga jibia hindi hindi lumalabas yung pag-araw or may may ilaw. Masa may ilaw hindi lumalabas yung mga yan. But this particular jibia can walk even in the day. Can even attack during the day. So they got attacked by this huge GBA that spits out that spits out parang parang sapo or webbing. It's it's spider like. Eh. It's spider like. It attacked the helicopter they were using to escape. So Kenroku found a way to to destroy it. Sensui's sword. Wala. Nabale. He was trying to. He was trying to to slash its head off, but naputol. <laughs> Ganong katibay. It's heavily armored, okay? It's heavily armored to the point that his that his own sword broke off. The blade of his own sword broke off. Ganong ka ganong ganong katibay. Ganong katibay yung balat. So, Kerno ko found a way to actually destroy that Jibia by crashing. The very helicopter they were riding into that Jibia. So they found a new ally in uh, the warrior monk. Okay. So kinunsa pa niya. Oh, paki 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 save naman to mga kasama ko kung nabala sa helicopter. So gano, kumbaga ganun yung naging discussion nila. Uh, the warrior monk was able to save all of them except si, of course Kenroko. He had to pilot that helicopter straight into that Jibia. Boom! Patay ang Jibia. But wow, okay, it's, uh, that's a scary thought. A Jibia who's a Jibia that's able to walk during the day, okay, that, that uh, that's able to forage during the day, okay. So what? Well, the human race is not safe, okay. With with Jibia now, with Jibia like this walk, like this walking, walking the earth during the daytime, okay. And well, they found a new ally. The warrior monk actually, actually comes from the same era Kenroko and Sensui are. So, medyo kilala nila, medyo kilala nila ang monk na to. Medyo kilala nila. 
Then uh, the episode ended when Brian, one of their um, one of their allies, becomes a Jibia himself. Okay, nilaslas lang siya ng sinugatan lang siya ng ng webbing ng nakalaban nilang Jibia. Tinaplis lang lang siyang ganon. Okay, so that means the um, the organic that that webbing is alive. Okay, so nako nako control pa ng 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 Jibia na yon kahit wala na sa katawan niya. Okay? As if as if as if the Jibia has an organic remote control over it. So nadaplasan nadaplasan si Brian dito sa sa what's called this sa leg niya right below the knee. Okay, right below uh, yeah, right right just right above the I think right above the uh, right ab- just below the knee. Okay. Sinasaka na siya ng painkiller ng ni, ni Dr. Yoshinaga, eh, yung kasama nilang scientist. Siyempre para ma-relieve yung pain kasi malalim na sugat eh. So, pagtalikod na ni Dr. Yoshinaga, woo! <laughs> Puta jibia na! So that's where the episode ended. Eh, that's, wow, okay, that's a, um, that was a twist I wasn't quite expecting. Kasi ang alam natin, you have to be bitten by one of these Jibia in order to become a Jibia. Pero hindi. Dinaplisan lang siya. Okay? Dinaplisan lang, dinaplisan lang siya. Sinugatan lang siya sa, sa binte. And a few hours later, into the night. Sorry. I was saying, a few hours later, naging Jibia na. <clears throat> wow. Okay. Talk about Talk about an apocalyptic storyline. Alright? It's a good it's a good way to end an episode. I tell you, this the sudden twist, okay, it I gotta admit, it caught me off guard. It caught me off guard. So Wow. Jibia, episode 3. Thumbs up. Okay. I almost gave it a this, but the final scene made it up made, made up for it. Okay? Especially the Jojo reference. Yare, yare. Yep. Even Jibia has a Jojo reference. Okay? At sasabihin ng iba eh, hindi sikat ang Jojo rito. Hindi, hindi, na, sikat, hindi na gano'ng kasikat ang Jojo. Hello! Why am I seeing references in this new anime? Alright? But I didn't give it a thumbs up just, to, just because of that. Okay? The reason that they, uh, the reason that they found a new ally who came from their own era, okay, from Sensui's and Kenroko's own era, so tatlo na sila ngayon, okay? Tatlo na sila talaga mandirig mga ngayon masasabi, okay, mga barako ito, okay, tatlo barako na yan kasama nila. And of course, we now found, we now find out that there's there are day walking Jibia out there, and at the end of the episode, one of them becomes a Jibia. This episode deserves a thumbs up. Okay? Whew. Wow. Okay, that's a plot twist. Okay? I hope um, Dr. Yoshi- Dr. Yoshinaga doesn't, doesn't become a Jibia himself in the next episode. Because they need him. They need his expertise. Because he, uh, he was on his way to developing a vaccine. Against the GB, against the GB virus, so they really need, they really need him to stay human as possible. They really need him to stay human. If he becomes a GBA, it's all over. Uh, it's all over. So, wow. Let's watch the next episode. We gotta watch the next episode. Decadence episode four. Natsume has been proven in well, in the heat of battle, so Kurinai, the field commander of the of the gears, has finally noticed her. Tinagam na siya sa the power. But Kaburagi seems uh, not happy. Right? Seems he's not happy about it, so he tells Natsume about it. 
the night before a major event will happen. Basically, na sinasabi ng ni Kaburagi na oh, amatay siya doon sa, sa major battle na yun. So, it's a major event. In the world of the cyborgs, it's a major event. So, doon sa virtual world, it's the final battle. Okay. He almost told, uh, Kaburagi almost told Natsumi the truth. Na Decadence is just a make-believe world. Mm. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so, well, and the day of the final battle has come. Talagang in full, in full gear outfit na si uh, Natsume, so to speak. Kasi, uh, they'll be, they'll be in, they'll be in a lot of snow. So, yeah, ano na? Ano na sinabang na sila. And, wow, it's the gandol's nest. It's the gandol's nest, so... Mapapalaban sila ito. There will be a lot of casualties. And, uh, nakita ni Kaburagi sa screen na, uh, yun, yun nga, si Natsume has uh, finally decided to join the final battle. So, gulat, ang gulat niya. After destroying her, after destroying her tank, <laughs> okay, nang tumuloy pa rin. Excuse me. So, it's a, uh, it's a setup episode for the next one. Which, which I feel it's a, it's a very big one. It's a very big episode. So, oh, side note. Kurunay actually, Kurunay actually and Mars Kaburagi. <laughs> I think she's doing everything She's uh, she's doing everything to to seek his approval, okay? <laughs> Which is not, I, siguro, siguro mga idol niya si Kaburagi actually, the the best born right now in the gears. Nga yung nakanotice kay uh, kay Natsume. I give it a thumbs up. There's a there's a lot of drama. Despite the uh, and a good mix of drama and action, okay. So yeah, again, it's another thumbs up for Decadence. I can't wait for the uh, I can't wait for the next episode because it's going to be a costly battle. It's going to be a costly event if you look at it through the eyes of the cyborgs. God of High School episode four. Um, I know that it had a funny start. Uh, Mira suddenly accepts a marriage proposal. Then Mori tries to convince her to well to get out of it. Then on her wedding day, nakailang sila Mori Daiwi. So I think they probably saw through through the guy's uh, intentions kasi nakausap din ni Mori yung uh, pinsan ni Mira uh, because um, yung father ng, ng bata uh, siyempre yung pinsan eh so, ang nag-adopt kasi kay Mira nung namatay yung father niya was, was her uncle uh, her her father's brother so yun na nag kay Mira and uh, her uncle was actually convincing the groom to ca- to call off the wedding kasi nakita na, nakita na rin yung ano eh uh, the, uh, the sword style be, that was passed on from uh, being passed on in the family baka ano eh it, it might die out with Mira's wedding so Mori and Daiwi, I think they actually saw that. They actually um, saw that might happen. So they crashed the wedding, and and convinced sila si, na convinced sila si Mira na wag na ituloy yung kasal. And well, the groom actually in major infuriated the groom, so he lashed out. 
by revealing his secret technique. Mira disposes of him <laughs> with a new move. Okay, with a new move. Monkey arm. Uh, a move we haven't seen before from her. So, nang bilang konsolasyon, kinuha ng groom yung kanyang wooden sword. And uh, Mori tried to chase chase after him. Sa amin ni Mira wag na. It's not na. Uh, it's not, the, it's not the wooden sword that's important, it's the technique. So, yun ang, basically, yun ang sinasabi niya sa dalawa niyang, sa dalawa niyang kaibigan. Then, things uh, made a turn for the worse. Daiwi's uh, best friend suddenly, well, I think, sudden, I think he died? Kasi yun ang lumalabas eh. Uh, while at work, he was... Um, he was being bullied again by these three. Na fed up si Daiwi, takes them all out. <laughs> he takes the, he takes all three out while at work. Pupuksarado yung tatlo. Hawakan nyo ba naman sa ulo eh. Then, in the semifinals, kasi they were, Mira and Daiwi were scheduled to fight each other in the semifinals. So, natuloy yun. Daiwi decimates Mira. And he made an uncalled for move. So by going after uh, the slash wound Mira Mira got from the groom. Kasi gumamit ang totoong espada yung groom eh. Ito nila dito. Ito sa binanatan. And dito yun eh. Sa, abdomen, sa right abdomen niya. Doon nga binanatan si Mira. Which in martial arts, even in, uh, in any martial art, that's an, that's an uncalled for move. Okay? That's a classless move. Ginawa ni Daiwi. So, nagulat si Morik, bakit ganun? And, yun nga. Daiwi told him, see you in the finals. Okay? Because, well, uh, I think there was a provision na uh, in order for uh, what you call this? In order for other fight, in order to preserve other fighters, ang ginawa yata ng na board in lag na isid na sa final si Mori. Okay. He was that OP. <laughs> he, the board finally realized probably that how 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 strong Mori is. Okay, how OP the guy is. So yung nga sinabi ni Daiwi, see you in the finals. And um, I hope the friendship doesn't end here. <laughs> okay, after what? Mori just witnessed and what happened to Daiwi and how Daiwi treated Mira in that match. I hope their friendship doesn't end there. Okay. So the episode ended with uh with Mira taking a selfie of all three of them after the wedding fiasco. Okay. Uh overall this episode is well is uh, really good. Well it doesn't have any fight scenes because uh, they put on uh, this episode was more human was more human than the than the previous than the first three okay than the first three so god of high school episode four thumbs up okay i could not give a thumbs i could not give a two thumbs up right now because the last the last part of the the last part of the episode was rather tough to watch okay I don't want to give it a thumbs. Again, I didn't, even, didn't I really didn't want to give the two thumbs up because uh, there was so much drama in the final parts of the episode. So it is a good setup for the next one. It's a good setup because uh, it will be Mori versus Daiwi in the finals. So contrasting styles, talaga yung dalawa nito. Eh. Daiwi is into Daiwi is a uh, a devout karate practitioner. Mori naman is a, is the heir apparent to a um, to an almost abandoned form of taekwondo, which he does very well, okay, which he does very well. So yeah, thumbs up, thumb, one thumb up lang. I really don't I really don't rate setup episodes that much, pero when it comes to God of High School, this is this is a really good setup episode. But oh, one thumb up lang. So we'll have to wait for the next episode to 
uh, we'll have to wait for the next episode, guys. So, yeah, we'll just have to wait for the next episode. For now, episode 4 of God of High School, one thumb up. Super Hexeros, episode 5. Wow, alright. After, after a uh, somewhat... After a, um, well, what you call this, a, uh, a fair episode, wow, okay, it met my expectations, there was a slam bang finish, okay, so, they went on, they took on the, um, the main base of the Kisichu, natuntunan nila kung nasaan, kasi dun, dun nila tinatakos ko kung sino, <clears throat> but, well, <clears throat> But while the other four were on the way, Hoshino met uh, met a um, what you call this a mutant Kisichu, si Chacha. All right, she is actually the the daughter of the queen, the pinaka big boss ng pinaka big boss ng Kisichu. So uh, unfortunately, mutant si Chacha, and she has been she has been She's being rejected by her fellow Kisicho kasi iba yung, kakaiba yung ano niya eh. Kakaiba yung itsura niya eh. She looked, kakaiba yung, ano, basta kakaiba yung itsura niya eh. <laughs> Alright. So, but she has a, but she has a, uh, but she has an ability that will eventually help out our heroes. That will eventually help out uh, Hosino and the others. Hold <coughs> on, oh, cool. <laughs> Booster. She has the ability to 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 boost H energy. All right. Okay. So, dumating ni apat. The rescue mission is on the way. They were able to get to get to the base itself. Until hinostage nila si Oshino. Tapos ang humarap sa kanila si si Enjo. Siyempre, boyfriend, okay? Boyfriend, although not, although not official yet. So, doon niya na-realize, doon niya na-realize that, wow, she has to step up. Kasi, Enjo is more than willing to give up his zero gear para na mailigtas siya. So, she now realized her worth, she now realized her purpose right at that moment. Then, Ooh, yun na! <laughs> Boom! She goes nuclear. <laughs> Kawawa kay Seicho. Kawawa yung ano yung yung humawak sa kanya noon eh. Yun yung yun yung nag disguise as the bookstore owner. Yun yung yun din yung humosit sa kanya ngayon. So, kawawa. <laughs> kawawa kawawa. So they eventually took the entire base out. Then Angel rescues Chacha. So, akala nila Akala nila, that's it. Pero, biligay sila ng heads up ni, ni Chacha that taking out the entire base is... Oh, no. Wala. Bali, wala yun. The only way to beat, to totally defeat to Kosechu is by beating her mother. is by killing her mother. The queen. Alright? Fact of science. If... <clears throat> if you want to get rid of of an entire colony of insects, you have to take out the queen. Right? Pag yun ang namatay, tapos ang colony. Eventually, the the rest of the colony will die out kasi wala na silang queen eh. They have nothing to live for. Okay? It's a fact of science. So, that's what you're, that's what you will, that's what you'll eventually learn in episode 5. So, yun nga. Uh, Chacha made a promise to the team na tutulungan silang i-retrain yung H energy nila because they will be up against her mother kasi syempre kilala eh, anak eh yun ang, yun ang prinsesa ng Kisichu although she is a mutant she's been rejected by her kind so she was more than willing so she'll now be more than willing to help out the to help out the team so wow okay a new twist so they gain an ally an unexpected ally okay Anak ng kalaban nila. 
anak ng kalaban who's who's more than more than ready to help them out with her with her own powers kasi beneficial yung powers sa 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 team okay so super hexeros wow super hexeros episode 5 two thumbs up <laughs> I call that a slam bang finish, all right? I call that a slam bang finish. So, episode four was a good setup, okay? Episode four was a good setup to this one. So the next episode, oh, they'll, they will, they will take her in. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see that, ep to watch that episode next week. So, again, Super Hexeros episode five, two thumbs up, okay? Peter Will in the Philosopher's Time, Episode 4. Wow, okay. What an awesome start. Peter comes in to rescue his fiance. Wow, okay. He shows a completely different side of him. First time I saw that face on Peter. The killer side of him. So, wow. Cuts up the creature to pieces. Okay, yun lang. <laughs> he's shown a ruthless side of him. Okay, and he's willing to do anything and everything to protect Lovelia. Okay. That's a real gentleman. That's a real knight. Okay, but Peter Grill, Peter Grill. <laughs> Again, Peter Grill, Peter Grill, Peter Grill. <laughs> Despite the celebrations, he still couldn't celebrate by himself. <laughs> okay. Here comes the elf again. The spell that that the elf put on him was called Weirdest Curse I've Ever Heard. <laughs> Eternal Erection. <laughs> okay. Don't get me wrong, but Eternal erection, you do not want to have that as a guy. Okay? If you're erect all the time without anything arousing you, okay, that's a health problem. But here, it's a curse. And the only way for Peter to to break it was to well, was to have sex with the elf. And he did. Here we go again. <laughs> Peter Grill, the, the reluctant womanizer. Okay? Oh my god. <clears throat> it's still uh it's still delivering the goods, okay? This anime this anime short is still delivering the goods. Okay? I got nothing to say. I really got nothing to say with this anime. Well, episode 3 was a bit of a letdown, but wow. It episode 4 made up for it. Okay? It broke any expectations I have. Okay, whatever, whatever expectations I have. <sighs> okay, <clears throat> I can't wait for the next episode. So I'm gonna make this a quick review. After all, it's an anime short. Okay, Peter Grill in the Philosopher's Time, episode four. Two thumbs up. Okay. Wow. I just can't wait for the for the next episode. So, guys, let's just wait for the next episode, okay? Shall we? Aparirman episode five. Well, another setup episode, <laughs> but whoa, okay, with a uh, with a rather. Uh, which got really wild, okay? which got really wild midway, okay? All the race, nearly all the racers were asking who's going to take pole position, okay? And Crazy TJ, okay? one of the thousand three, okay? the other are see, Dylan and Gil the Butcher, who's a... Uh, the fuck? What's the fuck with that mask, okay? Creepy looking! Creepy looking. 
He, he's big and creepy looking. No one really call him Gil the Butcher. Itsura pa lang. Mamamatay tao na. Alright? But anyway, so, Crazy TJ uh, suggested in his own way that they should, that there should be a pre-race to determine pole position. Okay? Every, everyone agreed okay, with their own reasons. There's um, some racers uh, made this reason. I am not losing to a woman. They were referring to Jalian, who is the only female uh, entrant. Okay? There is, of course, Apare himself. He confronted the two outlaws, he, uh, Gil, Dylan and si TJ. I want, I want pole position too. <laughs> is he kidding himself? <laughs> so, sabi ng, sabi ng dalawa, but, Okay. <laughs> so they're they're both uh they're both more they're both motivated by Apare. Okay, these two outlaws, strangely enough, they're both motivated by Apare's um uh, by Apare's brashness. Okay? That's well that's an eccentric genius for you. Okay? That's an eccentric genius for you. So we now end up with what we with how episode one started. This is how episode one started. Go ahead, go ahead. They were, they were, they were, they were all in position, gearing up for the pre. That was, I thought it was the actual race, but it was just a pre-race. Okay, it's just a pre-race. So again, we we all ended up with how with how episode one started. So yun nga. Uh, the pre-race started. Okay, so some executives uh, at the end of the at the end of the episode said that this race will end in tragedy. What do you mean? I thought, why? How? Why did why did that executive say that this will end in tragedy? Okay, it made me wonder. It made me fucking wonder. This is supposed to be a race, okay? A race of pride, a race of egos, okay? A race to settle all ego trips. In my in my point of view, it is a race to settle all ego trips. So yeah, whoever wins gets pole position. Okay? There are a lot of ego. There are a lot of egos to be settled here. So, and pro this race will probably settle them all. You know, uh, this episode of Apari Ranman is, well, it's highly relevant. I've heard from certain circles that, uh, that there are a lot of ego trips going on when it comes to pre-race parties. Alright? Even up, even before the pandemic hit, there were a lot of ego trips going on in pre-race parties. So, this episode of Apari Ranman shows it. Uh, uh, now I don't know if it confirms it, but it shows the it shows uh, a reality that uh, the car that race car drivers have to face. Of course, the uh, party egos. Yeah, there are, there are there are a lot of there are a lot of overinflated egos in no matter what the sport. There are a lot of overinflated egos. Okay, race car driving is no different. And Apari Ranman shows that. Apari Ranman episode 5. Two thumbs up. Okay. <clears throat> Tackling another somewhat um, issue amongst race car drivers. Present day race car drivers. Not just the uh, not just uh, the race car drivers of, of that era. Alright. If there were any. It, it's the early 1900s. Okay. It's the early 1900s. So yeah, we got another good episode of Apari Ranman. It's back-to-back -back episodes for them that I gave them the two thumbs up. Okay, so yeah, to the animators, to Studio Katokawa, keep up the good work, guys. Apari Ranman is your banner project. So I truly hope that next season, uh, the next anime season comes up, you you'll be getting, uh, you'll be coming up with. More original projects, not not just Apari Ranman. 
So, but Apat is, uh, Apat is a good start. So, to the animators, I salute you guys. I salute you guys.